Plus Adam from Star Hill Productions for my first Star Hill review. Yay! Um, today, I will be reviewing uh, Sonic and the Black Knight. No, it's not a sequel to the Martin Lawrence film, but it's actually a full-fledged new Wii game out that came out last week by the time you're watching this video. So instead of playing a shovelware Wii game, you can actually play a decent game. Basically, it's a sequel to uh, Sonic and the Secret Rings, a decent Wii game um, that many people enjoyed. There were some issues, like control issues, and there was a lot of hard uh, missions that took like so long to complete that it was just so frustrating. This game manages to fix most of Secret Ring's problems, but it does add a few. Um, basically, you're stuck with a sword. Instead of like jumping on enemies or like spin dashing, you wave around a sword like with the Wii remote. It's pretty weird, but once you get in the rhythm of things, it can be pretty fun. Um, instead of uh, in Secret Rings where you use the Wiimote to steer Sonic and flick it to do a homing attack, everything is mapped out to the control, movement is mapped out to the control stick, while everything else is mapped up to like either Wii buttons, like A button to jump, and flicking the Wiimote will allow you to use the sword. Um, it plays basically the same as Secret Rings, you're just running from point A to point B on rails, but actually the control is so much more better than like the floppy, sloppy controls from Secret Rings. Like you can actually pinpoint where you want to go better. But when you're starting off running, like if you're slow and you're trying to move left and right, it really feels sluggish, but then again this is a game that's meant to be played like just running full speed ahead instead of like just taking your time. If you do that, you're not gonna have any fun. It's a Sonic game, like you're supposed to be running fast. <laughs> Graphics are actually pretty good for a Wii game as well. It's not like your standal, standard, uh, oh, this is this game could be done on a GameCube. Nah, this it looks better than a GameCube game, but yeah, they could have still took an advantage of the Wii a little bit more. Um, the story was pretty interesting as well because instead of just having like your stupid melodramatic storyline in a Sonic game, it's actually pretty upbeat uh, and pretty fun. And the voice acting was not terrible at all. Like. Pass on games you can get out of your nerves, especially all the characters talking all the time. But this one, it, I was, it wasn't really cringeworthy. I had some fun listening to the voice acting, and plus, if you hate the English English, English voiceovers, you could just switch it over to the Japanese, which is a cool plus as well. Um, the issues I had with the game were the control for combat can be a little sloppy, like. If sometimes when I'm waving the Wiimote, it might be a little delay on your attacks. Like if I wave the Wiimote, Sonic won't react right away to swing his sword. And it's basically the best way to like attack is just like to jump, do a homie attack, and then swing the Wiimote to attack. A normal homie attack won't even work anyway, so you have to always use a Wiimote to attack, which can be pretty tiring at times, but, but I didn't really have that big of a problem with it. Um, some of those annoying missions from Secret Rings are back, but they're not mandatory to do. Um, not all of them are mandatory to do, like maybe a few. But other than that, um, you can just easily breeze through the game, which is another big problem. It's short. I beat it in like maybe three hours, three or four hours. I'm not entirely too sure, but all I know is like I played it all throughout the weekend and I finished the main story like just like that kind of sucks but then there's like so much replay value you can get from the game as well like you can complete all those missions you can unlock a lot of cool bonus material and perhaps even uh, some legacy stages too which you could just it has more sonic themed play um, items like bumpers and stuff like that and you can use their homing attack but I haven't unlocked those yet it's what I've heard and um, there's a multiplayer mode as well but then again I haven't really tried it, but I heard it's basically shovelware-ish minigame structure, but except you, it's more of a battle mode. So if it, if you played Secret Rings, you probably know like, what to know expect from uh, multiplayer mode. Um, a lot of reviewers were down on this game, whilst it's, 
well actually it had a lot of mixed reviews. IGN notoriously gave it a 3 out of 10 and to be honest it's not a great game. Like it, this wasn't a great game but at the same time I had a lot of fun with it even no matter the flaws it had and how short it was I still had loads of fun with it. It's it's, but I wouldn't spend 60 bucks on it. If you want to play it, at least wait a few months before it goes down in price, or just rent it and have fun. Like, since I'm an old school Sonic fan, and I've hated the past few games like Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 on the Xbox 360 and Shadow the Hedgehog, but I thought Unleashed was a pretty good game. But um, this wasn't this wasn't a bad effort. It was. It's not quite up to like the standards of the Genesis games. Like, there is no way you can make a game with Sonic having a sword and just running around and stuff. That's it's it kind of slows down the pace a little bit, but it for it's a decent Sonic game. I had fun with it. Um, if I was gonna give it a point system review, I would would have give it like maybe a six point five, perhaps. Like it had a lo lots of issues with it, but I. Liked it. So anyways, um, yeah, that's Sonic in the Black Knight. I hope you enjoyed my review, and it helps.